Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Houston with Hattie Houston Designs, and I've got another do-it-yourself tutorial for creating ocean waves with resin. Right now, I'm mixing up my epoxy. I've got a one-to-one -one ratio, so I wanna be sure that I get it exact. If it's a little bit off, it just won't cure right. So once I've done all that, I wanna take my mixing stick and go ahead and mix it up really, really good. I've sped this part up for you so it's not too long, but make sure you're scraping the edges. You don't want to make you want to make sure that it's completely mixed equally, or else that will make it not cure as well. I just want to say thanks to everybody who watches my videos. I love making these resin boards. If you don't follow me on Instagram yet, go and find me. It's at Hattie Houston Designs. And I'm going to be giving away this 1989 Taylor Swift inspired charcuterie board. So make sure you follow. As soon as I'm done mixing, I put over my little cups that I'm going to turn into different colors. I set those aside. Whenever I'm doing ocean, I normally do two different shades of blue and then I use one cup for white. Whenever you do this, you can do whatever colors you like. You can have three blues, you can have just one. I try to give it a little bit more dimension, so I, I tend to use two. I'll put just a little bit in one cup for my white, and then I can do equal portions, or this time I think I did a little bit more in one, so it'll be a darker blue will have a little bit more than my lighter blue. All right, now that I have everything portioned out the way that I want it, I'm gonna start with my white, and I'm just gonna add a little bit to it, and then I'm gonna mix it up really, really good. Anytime that you're mixing colors or adding pigments into your resin, you wanna make sure that you're stirring it really well, scraping the bottom and scraping the sides. Every now and then you'll notice that if you don't scrape it, that the color will be uneven because the the pigments you use are very very potent and so a little bit goes a long way so if you miss a little bit you're going to notice later on and it can give you a, a look that you're not in love with so for this piece i if you notice i put 1989 on it it is one of my favorite albums by taylor swift and I am inspired by this to do a little bit lighter blues. So I added one drop of white pigment into each of my cups that I'm going to do blue. Then I'm going to add one drop of blue into each cup and mix it really well. It's really important here that you make sure you are mixing really well and scraping the sides and the bottoms. Now that all the colors are mixed up, you're ready to start pouring. I typically start with my dark blue or the darkest color that I have so that it fades and gives a little bit better perception and depth. You can use your fingers here with your gloves and mix it into the edge. If I'm doing multiple boards at a time, I will use my fingers, but when I'm just doing one, I use my popsicle stick so that I don't get as messy. But it's really not too bad if you have a paper towel by you. You can just wipe off your fingers and move on to the next color. Once I feel like I have that spread pretty well, I'm going to pick up my light blue and I'm going to start creating the wave that I want it, the shape, and fill in the gaps. And once again, I'll use my popsicle stick to just mix it and start blending it a little bit. When I mixed up this epoxy originally, my shop was a little bit colder, and so it's really thick right now. And for me, I don't like the way that it's blending, and so one of the things that I've learned is if it's too thick because of the temperature, because it's too cold, I'll get my heat gun out and use that just a little bit. It warms it up and it helps it mix really well. As soon as I put a little bit of heat on here, you can see it start to warm up and then how quickly it starts to blend. I find that this is a quicker method and less messy. Gives it a little bit more of a natural look as well. Now 
When you have it all blended and you like the way it looks, you're ready to move on to the next step. You grab your clear and you're going to pour a wide section along the edge of your blue. This is how you're going to start defining your, your actual wave. This clear was also a little thicker than I wanted it to be, so to try to warm it up a tad bit so I could manipulate it, I decided to get my heat gun out for this section as well, just to make sure that I would have a really good wave formation. I like the way that this is turning out. I'm getting my white now and I'm going right along the very edge of the clear. If you go too far in, you're going to have a big gap and it looks kind of weird and you're going to have to come back over and retrace with your white. Now when I'm doing this blowout right here, it's hard to tell how I'm using the blow gun, but I'm, I'm pointed downward a little bit too much. And so I'm not pushing the waves out as far as I would like. So that's something you can play around with and find the right angles to push the white out and really manipulate the wave. On the bottom right side, you can see how I pushed the white out too far and kind of washed out the whole wave in that section. I don't love when I do that. And so what I have to do is go get my white and carefully, I retrace along that line. This does, this fills in the gap, but it also kind of thickens that, that wave on the very front edge. To me, this kind of makes it me feel like it's a little bit more foamy, make it look a little bit natural. Every now and then I can blow out the wave and I don't really have to come back and touch up the front. So this is something that you just, with time, sometimes you can nail it, sometimes you just have to go back through and touch it up. All right, we're almost done with this first layer pour. Now, it looks pretty good, and I'm coming through with my torch, and I'm popping all the bubbles. And I'm making sure to not hold the heat over one place in particular for too long. This can cause discoloration and it can make it, if you keep heat on it too long, it will cure uneven. So you want to be quick and I just pop the torch as I go across back and forth. This makes sure that I don't overheat it. Okay, so here we are 24 hours later. It's hard, it's cured, and it looks great. Look at all those cells. It's got great color. I'm so excited for my 1989 charcuterie board. Thanks for watching.